There we go. Sure, yes. Yeah. Hi. Okay. You, you asked if um, I had brought slides, and I decided not to because I was a high school teacher and a college teacher, and then we've done this adult formation class a number of times. I said, well prepared slides, and I thought, the pictures are out there. <laughs> so, what I do have on my iPad, I have some notes of things I'd like to talk about because um, Virginia and I are back after you're here for 12 years or so, and we've gone two years now, but we could talk all day about St. Mark's. So we won't, but, you know, I could talk all day about photography, but I won't do that. So, but I do have several things I wanted to talk about. Plus, I did bring a hand down. I couldn't stop doing that. One was, one side is the blurb that we wrote up a couple of months ago to introduce this series. And um, I, I understand that this is an adult formation series on, is it art and worship or art and... Faith. Faith, okay. And I thought I'd like to start by um, asking, oh, and the other side, I went to Wikipedia to write, we'll figure out what they, how they define art. And, uh, <laughs> and then I wanted to ask before I started there, what, what has, what, how many series have gone before this and what have been the topics? And if, you know, in a word, what was the concept? Of that? Within the series, Within. what were the other topics? Yeah, right. Or is this the first in the series? Second. This is the second. Second, okay. So we've been following one. Yeah. So we had a bit of an introduction, a sort of a lens to begin um, looking at uh, art and faith by uh, Patrick A. Fletcher. Uh, you are next. And then we will be talking about Frida Kahlo in that exhibit and uh, College of the Age. Hopefully, we will get some poetry in and some music in the English and the Book of Common Prayer. Mm -hmm. Have an exciting few weeks. Oh, very good. Yes. Well, I'm. Um, it. This is my second art show in the art series here. Um, in 2014, I had. Um, it was Luminous Spring. We called it, and it was a series of. Um, actually, it was um, about 25 pictures, spring pictures from the Arboretum in the nave, and then in the uh, Man Hall, I had. Uh, 40 pictures of reflections on the Chicago River, which were total abstractions. And I was I tried to make the case that they really were similar in my photography approach, even though, of course, ones in the Man Hall were almost all blue and silver for reflections on water, and ones in the Man Hall were almost all green and white with um, the spring growth and the blossom, all yellow, the daffodils, of course. Um, and so this is my second in this series, and I also want to do a little advertisement, which is I had put together a couple years ago my 100 best photographs from the Arboretum, and it's going to be published um, early next year as a book um, by University of Illinois Press, and it will be available at the Arboretum Bookstore, of course, but also at Barnes & Noble and online and places like that. So we're just in, I just got the, uh, the approved manuscript back, just it's 5,000 words, and actually ended up with being 85, 84 pictures, not 100 as it turned out. 2022 is the centennial celebration for the Arboretum, it was formed in 1922, so they have lots of things planned, and I saw that coming and thought, I'm putting together a book of my 100 best pictures, but I only found it. Pardon? It is, and, and we, Virginia and I, struggled back and forth on what to title it. And but the marketing department at U of I Press came up with light through the trees mm -hmm. photographs. Of the trees. Wow, that's great. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. keep, hopefully this thing will recognize me and keep my Am I sitting in the rock place? Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. So those are those are the three things I'm going on. And so I'm so honored that um, to have this show of my photographs from here. Um, where's Beth? Oh, there you are, Beth. Um, Beth started talking to me about it um, two years ago, back before COVID, and it was all scheduled, and actually I had printed most everything before COVID started, and it was ready to go up in April of last year, and then COVID happened, 
And so we had a whole year out. And so then Beth had the idea of, we could add what's happening in 2020, Zoom. And so we put together that selection at, at the end of kind of everybody on Zoom, like an endless year of, of being on Zoom. Um, in terms of um, the rest cross, Okay. I do want to talk a little about, about my interest in photography and and my deciding to think of myself as an artist. Um, like a, many young boys, I was very interested in mechanical things, and my father liked photography, and he had cameras, and I liked his cameras, and he had a dark room, and he taught me how to print pictures, and so I started at a young age taking pictures, and by the time I was eight, I was taking my first pictures, and by the time I was a teenager, I was really into photography, and then back at that era, at least, when um, not everybody in the world had a camera, like they do now, um, there were just a few of us who could use the dark room and use complicated cameras. So I went through the schools going, taking pictures of the school newspaper, school yearbook, and same thing in college. And I sort of thought of myself as a journalistic photographer. Um, taking pictures of you know the exciting things. When I worked in high school, I worked for the town newspaper and they would call me in the middle of the night when there's a car accident. So when we couldn't drive yet, someone come pick me up and then we'd drive out to the accident site and take pictures and go back to the press and make a print and then it'd be on the front page in the morning. So it's all very exciting. And so and that is a side of photography, journalism. And I so I went off to college the same way, um, thinking of myself as a journalist and taking photographs really in documentary style of things. But I also really enjoyed the other side of photography beautiful side of taking pictures of nature and things. Um, along the same path, um, like many of us discover, some people are good in math and science and some people are good in arts. And in fact, we divide our education system. Um, I went to a college of liberal arts and sciences and you kind of get a track there. And if you're going down the science route, they have prerequisites uh, that you have, to, you have to take some arts classes, and then you take the arts, then maybe take some science classes. Mm -hmm. So science and math were easy for me. I ended up starting, well, I started off as a physics major, and that wasn't easy with me, <laughs> um, for me. But then I took a geology course, and I became a geologist and went down to science class. Now, Virginia came to um, college a few years later, and she was in the arts side, but since she had to take science classes and then take um, we geology, <laughs> we met on a field trip. I was the upperclassman being one of the helpers on the field trip, and she was one of the uh, young students who didn't know anything about geology. So and still know. <laughs> so I could help her out. you don't need to. Peter? Yes. Discovery on that field trip. Yes. <laughs> and there's actually um, another part of the story that's very relevant to that. I was taking all the science courses. And um, my previous girlfriend, uh, uh, whom I was on good relationship with, all these I, uh, <laughs> um, said to me, I see, found the girl for you. And I, since I had, we had just broken up amicably, but broken up. I said, I don't want to meet her. Um, but anyway, we did meet there. But this girlfriend, um, I, so I was in my junior year and I needed to take some of those arts classes. And my fat girlfriend had the book for romantic literature. So that was enough for me to sign up for romantic literature and take that you could have her book. Because I have her book and I have to pay 40 bucks to get a new book. So that was my reason for choosing. Yeah. Uh, but I, when I look back on my education, that class was kind of the beginning of my education where I began to understand what, how to be educated myself. Math and science, to me were very um, easy, not easy, but you know, that's how I could understand the world working. But when I read, I, I kind of realized that the math and science that I was doing, my father had been um, taking the geology courses 40 years earlier. And his textbook was interesting historically, but not very relevant scientifically. And yet when I took the um, romantic poetry book written in the 1820s and 30s, the poetry was entirely relevant. You take, go 
go back to Shakespeare a few hundred years earlier, <coughs> go back to Chaucer a thousand years earlier, that literature is still completely relevant. And yet the science, you know, we don't go to a doctor that has the scientific, scientific skills of 1920 or 1820. Um, so to me, I began to see that while science is very nice and convenient, and I look forward to what science develops and use, it doesn't really affect or make my life. It, um, well, it does. Um, thanks to doctors, I'm very much more healthy and um, able to get around than my grandfather was <laughs> because of medical science. Um, but, and, and that's a very wonderful thing, but in terms of what, to me, what the meaning of life is, the truth with a capital T, and to me, in looking at my education, that was all coming through the arts side of liberal arts and sciences. And the technical side were wonderful advancements for life and for living, but, the, but for the things that were most important to me in understanding how to live and how to be and what was important in life, they were coming from the arts. And also, as a, my family was a Christian family, and my faith also was not that related to the science side, and that's where the meaning came from me in life. So in, um, by my junior year, even though I was full bore as, as a scientist and ended up spending 40 years in a career of science as a geologist doing environmental cleanup work, mostly here in the Chicago area. I always had the, my real interest in um, the thing I really liked doing most was to take photographs and see that really as my art because that was the place where I could find expression. And certainly I wrote a lot of papers in science and, and reports and work that I did and that was giving out a lot of information and it was all true information, but to me, it was all true with a capital T. It was all real, but it was reality, reality with a small R. Whereas the things that I was doing in my photography, that's where I could go in more deeper into things like that. Um, so I've evaluated it a lot, partly in writing a book. Um, Virginia is kind of my ghost writer. I have lots of ideas and understanding, but she has a knack for words. So she ties me with questions, so I thought, quite a bit um, and trying to think about well what um, in, in some ways hey, Roger, um, I um, I don't have I don't have a problem saying I'm a scientist because I'm a scientist I know that I do feel a little pompous to say I'm an artist <laughs> um, it does seem real um, um, I think it's better if other people say you're the artist than <laughs> you say it yourself. Um, and, but then I was thinking more deeply, what do I think art is? And I think, to me, art is really simply a method of communication. We all talk a lot, we write a lot, and we have written words, and, and um, written words and spoken words have lots of rules, grammar and diction and spelling and all those kinds of things that make it easier to communicate clearly. To me, and this really, I started this idea, I think with Cecilia several years ago when we were talking about, um, when we did a series on art in adult ed, and I titled the section um, Beyond Words. But to me, art is a, a way of communicating that is beyond words. Would get out of words and beyond words. That's where art starts to communicate. And to me, it can communicate the same things that words do. It can communicate the art, the sciences, or the factual, dry, academic kind of stuff, or it can also communicate emotions. And perhaps that's where it becomes strongest, is that it has the we have the ability to art to communicate um, emotional things. And that's then where I begin to focus on feeling or a picture becomes meaningful is when you distill into the photograph the emotion, the feeling that you had when you were there, not simply the <clears throat> physical picture of what was there. Um, yeah. So is that where you use the technical knowledge to be able to, to, to do the process of distillation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> the um, technical, um, one of the reasons I was a photographer as a kid 
was there were a lot of technical things that you need to do. And I was good at that technical stuff. And I like cameras. And so I could make good pictures in the dark room. You know, the uh, editor of the newspaper said, here, come here, come here. Print his pictures. And so I, I got to do that job. Now, I, I was thinking one of the titles that I thought of for my book that's going to be coming out was, we are all photographers now because we are. <laughs> Everybody here has almost as much technical capability as I do in taking pictures um, residing in this thing. You know? um, I still have a few tricks, but there's an awful lot of things that this can do that simply weren't possible even 10 years ago. Um, and I like to think of it as um, the technical thing is like grammar or diction and that it really is important to follow those rules. No, it isn't important. You start out learning to follow those rules in order to communicate clearly. But if you go to someone like Emily Dixonson, you realize she just didn't follow them. You know, she didn't capitalize and she didn't make full sentences and she used lots of dashes and was able then through those words to communicate tremendous emotion and feeling through just a few words. And it was almost like she learned the rules growing up, but the rule became a little less important when she was expressing herself fully. Um, I do want to leave a little time to go over and walk through and answer any questions about pictures. Can you talk about? I have the next part. Like, what, taking pictures. Pardon? Taking pictures by feeling. Oh, yeah. Um, I sort of got to that, but um, what I, so I, we thought a lot, and Virginia knows a lot of what I think about this because she's helped me put it together in the text. Um, being a photographer, um, I grew up in the era when photography was fighting to become considered art. Painting was art, photography wasn't. Uh, kind of grudgingly in the 60s and 70s, it was rec recognized that, well, black and white photography is art, but not color. And it really wasn't until the 80s and 90s that color became accepted. And then with postmodernism, photography became kind of the center of art. So what everybody did who was doing art was doing it in a postmodern type of way. So I went along with that. And I had a lot of confusion growing up because I was right in um, the switch over from modernism to postmodernism. And I kind of favored the modernist style of photography. And my freshman year in college, when I was taking pictures, I was doing lots of journalistic kind of stuff. My sophomore year, everybody just assumed I was going to be a photographer of the yearbook again. But the yearbook editor was an art major. And she wanted me to take pictures. She said, well, take pictures of um, like down inside a garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and in art class, she'd seen some of the postmodern art that was coming out of the Institute of Design and the Art Institute. You know, and that was when people were taking pictures of broken windows and peeling paint. And I was kind of, why? <laughs> what does that have to do with it? Um, but that, the thing was that though pictures of peeling paint or they were capturing um, feeling and an ethos, um, I was realizing that and, and not really interest myself in taking just strictly documentary pictures anymore. I started taking pictures going out to the Arboretum quite a bit even then taking pictures and trying, I mean, I would go there and it was so wonderful, as you all know, to walk out of the concrete and into the trees and you just feel the relaxation, feel the peace, feel the greatness. Um, you know, it really is a near spiritual experience of going into nature. Um, you can start, you can say, oh, wow, I start taking pictures. You go home and you look at pictures. And say, well, that's not what it was like. <laughs> so then the question is, well, how can I, photograph to distill some of it and bring, bring, it, bring it back. With me. And that becomes a challenge. And my, I realize that, that I don't, like with, with the grammar rules, I don't, there are well-published rules of composition for photography. For example, you don't put the subject in the middle of the picture. You think of a tic-tac-toe board with designing lines and you put the center of interest on one of the bisecting points that's called the rule of thirds. So you're using a third placement. And there's a, a bunch of rules that you can hear about in fact, you know, in, in uh, the days when there were lots of bookstores, so there's a shelf on photographic composition. But I realized those came from painters. Painters, when they had a blank canvas in front of them, they say, gosh, I got to put stuff on that. <laughs> See, got lines, they got shapes, they got colors, and they start putting things on there. And I 
open up my camera, it's already full of stuff. Right? It's already got lines, shapes, and colors there. I've already got two things to do. I can move to a new spot, and as I do that, this screen becomes kind of a kaleidoscope where the shapes and the lines start to move themselves around. And that's the main thing I can do. And, oh no. and the other thing I can do is I can pick the time when I take the picture. I, can, um, I, go, I go out to the Arboretum and I see a beautiful thing and I take a picture of it and I come home and I go, oh, that's not so good. Maybe it'd be better if I was there early in the morning. Maybe it'd be better if there was late in the afternoon. So I can pick a time or I can wait. <laughs> And that's it. That's really what I can do as a photographer. I can pick the spot where I am in the place that I'm looking to, and I can pick the time that I'm there. And I can really talk about that in a lot of detail on the pictures that are out there in the, um, in the nave. They, of course, are mostly, um, I'm picking the time in the church setting because I have very limited places that I can be. George didn't invite me up to stand on in the sanctuary, take pictures during a service. You know, I had to kind of stay in the back. <laughs> and then, and uh, I'd go up in the um, balcony and, and have to argue with Charles or um, Daniel. Daniel to, uh, or Marsha to say, because <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be getting in their way. Um, so I had to pick certain places. But then when I'm there, I'm waiting. Um, and then when I'm waiting for that, it's, um, again, I picked a spot where I hope that everything will come together because in taking pictures of people, things are always moving, there's always expressions, and I'm waiting and watching, and trying to feel the pattern. And what that is, I'm feeling it. I'm not really um, thinking about it logically. I'm just trying to get the feeling of it, get the flow. I think one way would be if you think of watch a little kid get ready to go into a jump rope, they kind of go, and then they go in. I've thought of it. Um, as another way, this is something that everybody can do, and it's really magical. If I had a ping pong ball here and I threw it at Josh, he could, he, he could just reach up and grab it. Or if we were outside and I threw a Frisbee, the second I threw it, most of you could start running right to where it's going to be when it gets there. Because our, mental, our brain has things that are beyond logic, beyond our momentary processing, that we, in an instant we can see that Frisbee starting to go, we know where it's going to go, and we can start moving to get there. And I think it's the same thing in photography, where I'm in a scene, and I'm looking, and I'm starting to feel what's going to happen and where it's going to happen, and I'm kind of waiting and waiting and waiting. And actually, the digital era has been very good for that. When film costs $10 a roll, yeah. you take and have 36 <laughs> pictures, and now, um, well, you know how many, how many pictures you have on yourself. This is probably remarkable. And you have to wait you can to see if you got it right. And then, and then you have to wait. That's such a good point, too. Um, so that has been a valuable thing. Another part of it um, is taking pictures of people. I become, and, and I'm saying this in a way to encourage you all to do the same thing now, since you are all photographers now, too. Um, and I also, what I, uh, one of the things I do is I throw, uh, throw away a lot of pictures. Um, I, I am, I, back in the film days, uh, and I'm having fun right now, I'm going back through a bunch of my old negatives. And back in the film days, I would take a roll of 36 exposures and I would maybe make three or four prints. The fun now is I'm going back and scanning 36 exposures and seeing all the ones that at the moment I didn't think were important and I didn't look at. And now I'm going, wow, it's really fun. And we found a few pictures. Well, that's better than, oh boy, I'm glad I didn't do any of those. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, but um, what I'm getting to with that is when I'm, most of what I'm doing in the church then, of course, is I'm taking pictures of the people in the interactions. So then I'm watching people, and you, everybody, you've heard the, oh, take a picture of my best side. People do have the best side. Mm -hmm. um, but also a lot of communication between people happens with expression. Just, um, and you can see this in, in actresses and actors that are good, just a slight flinch of an eyelash or a twitch of a lip communicates a lot. And so when I'm taking pictures, I'm watching the person or the people trying to see where, when they look best, when they are being expressive. And I'm just kind of processing that. But I'm feeling it. I'm just kind of letting it flow in and think about it. 
and I'm beginning to learn to anticipate what's going to happen. And like when somebody hits the ball and you take off at a run knowing what's going to get there, I'm kind of just I'm waiting. I'm going to be taking, make sure that the camera's focused at the right spot. <laughs> so when I do play it, it's going to be focused. And yes. I was just going to just ask you a brief comment. You know, so when we're, that we're all photographers, it's like giving Bibles to everybody and they're just going right. <laughs> um, but which is good. Um, but when I take a picture off and there's an element of disappointment, well, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know what I'm seeing and then it's like, oh, this isn't that. And then other times when I take a picture, I'm like, oh my God, this is great. You know, so it's like, I don't know if that ever, if you know, if that's a common thing that you feel. Absolutely. Um, and, 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 but okay. you've seen this thing and you want to capture it and you just can't. Mm -hmm. And it's like, darn. <laughs> it's a big, big disappointment. in Photoshop. <laughs> right. But then it's almost like, you know, you can distort it to turn it into something, but, but you missed. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm just wondering if that's. If that's oh, that's a, that's a huge part about it because it, the fact um, that I do say, uh, that I have, um, I, in, in film days, I would take 36 exposures and make three of them. I'm still the same. I still take a thousand pictures and look at a 10. <laughs> um, and I am always disappointed, very common disappointed. And I am commonly thrilled and excited. My best pictures, I don't feel ownership of, of most, of most. It's almost like it's a gift that came from somewhere I took it and I was there, and afterwards I go, wow, I'm really honored and moved that I took it. And then I hear other artists saying the similar thing. I heard John Denver saying the thing about when someone asked him about where a song came from, he said, I just came from it. And, and I really almost don't feel an, an ownership of it. I feel like a participant. And I talked about that earlier about um, in, my, in the um, Luminous Spring Times, I talked about thin places and how um, well, going back to further, I was saying that, um, you know, a bunch of things together here to close it down, I guess, um, that art is communication. It does communicate feelings, and I think it has the power to communicate things that are most important to us and mean the most, which is what I discovered in my romantic lit class when I was reading poetry and going, wow, these two lines capture the essence of what it is to live or to be in love or to suffer or feel something. You, the words or a photograph or a painting are, and I can't, it just it comes from the artist right through you. And George, that very seldom gets there when you're trying to put it there. But that's one of the benefits then for me to come to St. Mark's every day with a camera. Um, when uh, Beth and I, when Beth suggested this picture idea, um, she said, well, let's um, look through some pictures. And then when she saw that I had about 10,000 <laughs> from 10 years, well, I mean, 10 years, 10,000, about 1,000 a year, yeah. that's about 20 Sunday, 20 times 50 of 1,000. Mm -hmm. That's not a lot of pictures. And when you think about that, 20, that 20 probably is from 200 that I took on a given day. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of pictures there. And so we decided to distill it down to about 100. But still, if you've seen pictures around here, you know, well, us all out at Eric Lake or us at, there's a lot of pictures of us standing. So Beth suggested, how about St. Mark's in motion? So they said, okay, let's just go with pictures of motion. So then that, we let we get to ditch a lot of pictures that way. We still then, um, I still sent George and um, Beth a, um, a I, I divided into different types of things, 4,000 pictures from the 10 years. And we had to get that down. To 100. <laughs> and so what you see out there, you see, is just a very small number of the pictures I took. And there's a lot of really interesting and fun pictures in that 4,000. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's hard. And, um, it, you know, it's hard to get down to it. On the other hand, so Sarah, Beth called me and said, mm -hmm. help me. <laughs> <laughs> we met at the library and went through a lot of pictures. But there, there's several things. I mean, answering your question a little bit more, George. I. But um, I do have both the, I'm disappointed often because I do know what I want to get. I feel it, I feel it, but I don't get it through the camera. I do have enough experience, and I would guess, I'd venture to say, looking at my friends, the Carries, you have that playing the cello or the flute. Mm -hmm. You want to express a feeling, and there sometimes when you do it, and you, the crowd, the audience, mm -hmm. and And there are sometimes, perhaps, that they don't, and you know it. 
Mm -hmm. You say, so, you know, well, what's the difference? It's the same note. <laughs> you know? it's, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's something that's beyond words. When the picture works, when it communicates, it's magic. It it's does art. It. Then it's art. It's art. Then it cries. I like to think it's, it's pretty easy to take a pretty picture. It's really hard to take the wonderful, beautiful picture. There's a gulf between those. Mm -hmm. Pretty picture to meaningful, beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just have to say in response to, to George's comment that it's also a reminder to just enjoy that moment and mm -hmm. not need to record it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I'm like, just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you see everybody up there with their cameras. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so that's something that I've been learning too, that's kind of come recently. And it pairs with something you said before about taking a, a, just tons and tons and tons of them. I'm trying to wait now. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to wait and it's kind of like not set it up a lot, just kind of trying to be natural with it and let it be what it is, but staying in that moment. And half the time, mm -hmm. those do what I wanted them to. <laughs> like not thinking about it too much, but I'm being in that moment. I, I say it very exact, very close to what I do. Um, I, I do try to figure the spot that I want to be in, where it's going to, where the best, most potential is going to be. And then I, then I try to get my mind out of it. I try to wait. And I try to feel it. Just feel it. Um, an, an extension, and I, I say I used one uh, sports example. I got another one. And that would be to say, um, if you've met a golfer who's hit a hole in one, um, you know, every time the golf go to the golf course again, they hope to do that again. And so, how about if you ask them and say, "Okay, how'd you do that?" <laughs> they don't have a way to explain how they did it because, of course, if they could do it, <laughs> they'd go do it. If I could take a beautiful, wonderful picture every time I would, <laughs> could I would take a lot fewer pictures and <laughs> I'd say, "Well, yeah, I know how to do this. <laughs> do it." I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Really, I know. I know that they happen for me when I spend the time and. Um, they happen for me. So when I, so for me, church is a very important part of my, the, both my faith, both my relationships with the people, the things that are going on are very important, are very meaningful. And so when I'm um, resting and in peace in that, um, I have a better chance that when I take a picture, um, I'm going to do it at the right moment. I'm going to be able and so, we'll see what I think that's covered all the things I was thinking about saying. Maybe it was a little bit of my, oh no, no, there's a very important <laughs> Photographers are known for being um, pretty proud of their final pictures and not letting the other cry. And things like that. But I have been blessed by that. Um, they also need to be arranged. They need to be arranged. And so when we're talking about an art show, it's like, okay, what's this art show going to be? We've got 4,000 pictures. Mm -hmm. What do we do with 4,000 pictures? <laughs> and so one of the first things Beth suggested was we could kind of make single collages to go between each window. And then she said, would you let me crop? And I said, well, I've had experience with Beth. I know that she she has an unerring design. <laughs> she knows, and probably the same way. You probably, if, if I ask you to define how you know, you probably don't know. You just look and you feel it. And so I trusted her, and she, but she didn't want quite four thousand to work. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the panel to look dynamic. You know, when you get too much, it waters it down. So I just. So we divided it into events, mm -hmm. and we came up, I think, with 15 events, and then it was, I think, there were 14. And then it got down, then I went through and I picked about a dozen of each of those, because then that gave her the ability to cross and fit things together as you see. So then each panel is a very beautiful design that works together, both color-wise and, and graphic-wise, I guess. And feeling wise, they all fit together. And that, you know, that's a whole other part of the art brought to it that really helped me a lot for that to happen. 
Um, and there are pictures that I'm sad about in there. Mm -hmm. um, or events too. I mean, we could have probably, if we really thought about it, gone up to 25 or 30. But, but, but nobody, nobody who didn't see him is going to miss him. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like that's they they to me they those pictures um, and the arrangements of them do as a group distill a bit of St. Mark's for 2008 to 2018, which is basically that. I would add that the layouts, the, the structure of those blocks also encompass motion, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Motion, by the way. Like, just not a point of that. So, the pictures in the moment. Yes, the subject is in the but also. The way they're facing in. Yes, well, and, and also and, in the and the, the shape, like the large, the small, and how they're all moving throughout the show. Right, and, and that every panel isn't an identical right. shape right. and stuff. Right. You know, some have two pictures, some have five pictures, yeah. and um, that yeah. kind of brings it to <laughs> life, too. So then, a couple months ago, so then we had to decide when it was going to go up, and we had to Dr. George, when's the church going to open? So we decided to put it up in April, I guess. If I knew. And George said, and write me a blurb. So I said, Virginia, can you help me write a blurb? <laughs> <laughs> and so here it is. You take your paper from 2009 to 2019, first year for Peter Vaught took over 4,000. It was actually pictures of what he saw and experienced here at St. Mark's, a very lively and vibrant church life. Two years ago, back to London, and the art committee began to plan an exhibit with the pictures. After reviewing photographs and selecting under them, they aptly named the exhibit St. Mark's in Motion. Um, notice there was a little artistic process. Oh, yeah. It, it was reversed. Yeah. <laughs> but it really <laughs> sounds reasonable, doesn't it? <laughs> it took a year to select the course, which it did. Design the exhibit, prepare the 14 panels of photographs you see on the walls in the name. Last spring, the exhibit was ready, but the pandemic got in the way of the installation. Now St. Mark's in Motion is here for us all to see and enjoy. Newborn baby being baptized to a 97 year old priest and scholar lighting a candle. You'll see dear friends and family, multiple years worth of beloved feasts of the Virgin of Guadalupe, Holy Week services, concerts, dramatic presentations, and as many pumpkins mm -hmm. as pictures Peter has taken. <laughs> Walk through the day, look and see, and you'll fall in love with St. Mark. And I'll be back on oh, September 10th to have an official talk um, mm -hmm. about this. Um, one of the things that I liked doing so much by St. Mark's in Motion was to put <coughs> different years of the same thing happening. You know, so it was so fun to see. And sometimes you see a little kid, same kid. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's been a wonderful experience for me. It was nice for Virginia and me and pandemic to be going through the pictures ourselves. And, and we had all those panels. We had them up in our, you know, first in our apartment, then in our condo. So we got to look at them. Right here. Yeah. yeah. So, there's a friend. So, are there questions? You went on a walk in, in there, and, or can we? Is it for people? Or no, we can definitely move. Panel, and, and, and if you want to look at a, several or all the panels and just kind of, that would be fun to see them and have you talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, let's, just go. let's go. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Joanne has the iPad here. So, Edna, you can continue to be with us. Oh, and more people are here to be open by saying if you're vaccinated, it's um, mask, mask optional. optional. Um, so, and, but for the service at 1030, we'll ask everybody to wear masks. And also, Cecilia and Joyce um, helped on the show. So just giving a shout out to that, yes. too, because it was a, a joint effort. Working in the back. Yeah. Sometimes those just don't go away. Yeah. Yep. Hi, yeah, no, but hi, it's good to see you. And I wanted to make a congratulations on you. So you're the number one now. We are strong considering that for Hannah, we're also using a turning point little. Oh, yeah, there's a yeah. Yeah. Um, as you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And I'm sure the schools are too. Like it's good oh, to have yeah. the right match. Of course, the teachers are different. Yeah. And so yeah. that's a big yeah. thing. 
That's right. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was quite a day. Mark. Can you hear me? Yeah. Laura, can you hear me? Yes. I'm mute. Laura, you're on mute yourself. Hi, I'm Shmoo. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. This is perfect. Um, just, back in May of two, a year ago, you know, I, when we were Zooming all the time, I, and we, Beth had already suggested I do something like this for a couple of Sundays, I think two Sundays in a row, I did uh, do a bunch of screenshots because it seemed like it would capture a part of St. Mark's that we all got so used to it in the years from now. Well, I don't remember. So I apologize to people who I didn't include the best photos of, but <laughs> I did have, like, from that screenshots, um, I did have um, dozens of, of screens with about 20 pictures on each one. And what I did is I laboriously went through and figured out the name of each person. Pretty easy since it's written there. And then I tried not to duplicate most people, except George and uh, the, the, uh, the clergy. Um, and then I tried to pick the best picture of each person or the funnest or the funniest. <laughs> And then arranged them. And so I had, I just had the grid and I just picked and chose and bought them in places. And of course, I picked a very nice one of Virginia and me sitting in front of the camera. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. That would be a nice some kind of reflection of picture in picture. Uh, but I had a lot of fun um, picking out the individual pictures of people because they, they were such wonderful expressions of people engaged in, in church service. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> Uh, beautiful. I'm so blurry. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of people. I didn't want to scare anybody. I didn't want to scare anybody. That's right. <laughs> Where are Jerry? <laughs> and Peter, I appreciate your willingness to do that because I'm realizing that it's not more of a topic. And the putting that as part of the show is part of our. Yeah, but it's a I know for you, you know, it's not your pictures. Yeah. A screenshot isn't safe as a new Yeah, but I didn't get to arrange them. Yeah, yeah. Looking like sort of almost some interactions going on in there. It's almost like found the arts. Found the arts. Sorry, <laughs> I'm like the rude photographer here. <laughs> Can you see that, Edda? No, the, the pumpkin, the pumpkin shots have a really good example because um, for six or seven years I got to come to the pumpkin patch and not carry any pumpkins. <laughs> Kate walking like that, and there, 
right there is, the, is that's like the catching the fly ball. The timing, the, her stride, where she is, is all just at the right moment. And that picture didn't exist until the exact instant. Of that. Okay, so I had this kind of wait and trust. And you were watching. I was, like, oh, I was watching, 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 and suddenly it was right. And so, and her foot is going up, and, and her she's her going forward. Just, right. That picture of Kate to me looks like. Um, after normal, well, yeah, it doesn't like wrap up at all. So it looks like an illustration that Susanna Bob Chapman. Yeah, because that that kind of yeah, that the term right. And there's another. Journey for journey from back to actual. Yeah. The one from the picnic has several different things, and these are good examples of. I picked a spot and then the wait. The bottom left of the kids jumping, that one is you know, waiting to get just the right moment uh, when everybody. When, when they're jumping, and it. these two arms are both going up at the same time. And, and okay. just, you know, it's happening really fast. And, and just. George throwing beanbags. And the other one, yeah, it's like the guys with the hamburgers. I did that fairly regularly each year. And you, many people, so you probably have been involved when I take a group picture. and. I usually, I get a picture set up, and if you think about this, I'm very intentional on how I do it. I get it set up, I know I've got about five minutes, and everybody's going to be very tired of it, and not be here anymore. But I also know that I've got a lot of people that I'm looking at the camera with a reasonable expression on their face. <laughs> and so I kind of start, I get in a position to do something on the, on the ladder right there, right in their face, and I'm, I'm holding the camera. I'm not. Not only the digital areas, I usually the screen on the back, but the film is I didn't look for the camera, I used the wide angle lens, and then I'm talking with people and I'm watching them very carefully. So they're engaged. And I'm engaging with the people, and when I get the right engagement, I take the picture. With the group picture, I'm I'm making jokes, I'm making comments to kind of get the crowd in kind of a pulse with me so that at one moment I'm going to take the picture. You, I often and often count. I make a joke with Paul Curtis and Paul Lance. I'm going to count to three. So if you're going to blink, please blink on two. And then I had a recap last on that. And so I've got to do the smile on everybody's face. And then I will, you know, so I'm going to take three pictures. Actually, I usually take five or six. And then I'll pick somebody out and say, you know, um, if I know that I'm saying, I didn't do the smile. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so. The up has overtones of uh, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, because it's the Sunday afternoon at heart. <laughs> that's the right place. I'm just walking and as I'm watching, just moving like this. Every every step I take, everything is shifting. These people here and there, people moving a little bit, and I'm just letting feel. And, and there's a moment where I'm going. So if you look at that picture, there's also, I think, a real awareness of um, putting a, making a piece of artistic piece. Because you have those two trees, and that really gives a clear indication of perspective mm -hmm. that we wouldn't have if the other tree wasn't there. Um, and there are trees in the Sunday afternoon. Yeah, yeah exactly. Same place. Now, one of the things that is um, um, when I talk to art a little bit, there's a, there's a feeling of teaching that composition, but in a way that always comes second. And then maybe it's that people who are artists, there's certain rules that they know when you, when you have a blank canvas, you have to arrange things a certain way. And maybe I'm, I'm feeling that same thing when I'm seeing it, but it doesn't help me when I was there to go, let's see, okay, there's two, two trees. I can use that to kind of stabilize the picture. Um, you know, I, it's really, there's nothing logical about it. I'm, I'm just feeling. looking and feeling. Yeah. And when I, I can, there's two things. I'm feeling balanced. I mean, I don't want anything extra. Like with the kids dancing, you know, jumping there, there's nothing extra in that picture. Every bit of it is alive. 
or the picture we picture George from being back. Yeah, so that one is a great moment. It doesn't George look this so cool? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> and it's the right moment to be back right there. <laughs> And so I'm waiting there, I'm watching George, and I'm waiting and watching and waiting. I've got focus, I'm waiting. And, and we're now. Hey, guys, really? Yeah, all right. So we go down. Yeah, we're the left. Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? So expressive. And <laughs> the pageants, too. They're, they're a combination of nervous and excited and uh, trying to see their parents just in groups like that. And like the top right one, the, the boys have just finished their lines or something and they're very proud of themselves. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I love the angels coming down. They, yeah, that's all. Coming down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so typically, um, some of that, is, I guess that's what they're the angels are up there. And that's always a wonderful thing. You can get you know, over this part of Virginia standing, basically, to get that. This is such a wonderful shot of them doing interesting. And then one time, and I go, I think they're come back home again. So I said, zoom back to be in the right place because they're coming down the stairs there. And wait for the right moment. Hmm. I love the colors. Hmm. Oh, that's one of the things, too, that's really, I, I mentioned earlier, for many years, black and white is considered the only good photography. Uh, I always, I couldn't wait for color, um, and I just love what color can do. It's true, natural colors can clash and be garish, but they also, that's how you see things. And the digital era makes it perfect, makes it possible to make, um, the carries, you, you play, but there's something about perfect tone yeah. that uh, resonates and brings. And what digital, to me, what digital has allowed has made it possible to make perfect color, and perfect match color. So, in fact, I did make prints of all of these individuals several times before making these panels to balance the color of each of the panels. So that so this one's a little bit yellow, the outdoors one, and the right back, back right is a little bluish. Um, you do get a different look, but, then, but you can basically change that very easily. And I think just to speak to your, the work that you invested together in the composition of this panel, I really like having that backdrop, um, that painted backdrop mm -hmm. in the upper left, and also a little over. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's Mm -hmm. all together, it makes yeah. it a cohesive <laughs> and, you, and that's a good one to look at that. So that the, the running the running shepherds are going diagonally up to there. The little girls are looking up to there. The angels are coming down to there. It's just a lot of motion in that picture. Now Virginia likes to talk about when she's like Kelsey. She likes a picture now. She likes to talk about the motion in the picture. I, I, I like an individual to picture. See, um, I, I like to see things moving around, and, and I also like my eyes. I, I think it's a great picture when my eyes start and go up and through and all the way around and every part of it and back, and then I want to do it all over again. And when I want to keep looking at it and doing that all over again and not stop, that to me is a great picture. So that's a good picture, and that's what Beth is doing here the sign for the entire panel. Which uh, makes it all the more fun. Let's move on up because there's more up here. I, I always love Mount yeah. Sunday. It's just, there's such great opportunity. And uh, but we do have thousands of Palm Sunday. And we didn't even include them on there. The donkeys here in the sanctuary. And the name. No, I just answered things. We didn't, we didn't even include, I, there are, we had a lot of big problems, and we didn't even include one of them. You didn't sign right in here. So, so Peter, when, you're, when there's a, a, a crowd, not just a group, but a crowd, how do you take a picture? Like, how do you find a picture? I, I know by feelings, but 
Can you guide us a little bit? No. Okay, well, you can see from that one, and this guy from the digital camera, the screen on the back. I often take a picture like this up um, for two reasons. I said older. We look better from above than we do from voice less. <laughs> so I do a lot of eye pictures <laughs> because it works out better that way. And a group like that works looking a little bit more depth. Now, um, I did say, and this is in my book, you can choose I. Now, I just said there are two things that I have as a darker. Um, tiny points, like a big tiny points. Actually, there's a third thing, and that is taking the lens like wide angle or both. That we change the perspective. It may look like that's a wide angle picture where I am really wide, but it isn't. I'm, I'm there, I back up, but then I zoom the camera in close. And what that does is for sure is distances, and so it brings the people there back closer perspective. If I would use a wide angle lens, the people behind the picture would be very tiny and way off the distance. And so by moving back and zooming in, I pull everything together that way. Uh, the, another type of picture though of the other lady holding the flag is the opposite, where I'm she's I'm waiting, she's coming right up close to me and I have a wide angle so that I'm just six feet from her, but I'm taking a huge wide angle and that that becomes a very active, interactive picture when you do that wide angle. So that, that would be the third thing you do. When I'm looking at the scene, I'm thinking, do I want to be wide angle telephone or normal? I'm picking a lens that can give me perspective that I want to be a good picture. <laughs> yeah, all these come from what you picture the normal frame such shape, and there are very few of them over there. I also always like the walk burning of the palms because that's such an exciting and fun time. So, so is this wide angle or telephone? It is a super wide angle, yes. Ooh, did you say you like that one? This is my favorite one, yes. This one. This time I'm not surprised about that, but... You got through one side. One, two more. I'd love to come back for the opening. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, come back for the opening for the other side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about how you got that one. Uh, up in the balcony. Uh, and it was completely dark. And that's, oh, it's okay. that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's thanks that. to modern technology, expensive lenses, and <laughs> tripod with camera still, because as you can see, it's candlelight. And also a fair amount of photoshopping to brighten the people that really are much darker. People that are, as you know, the uh, intense pulse square distance. So a candle close to space, face, like in the back, is the sure it's completely white. Like there's nothing to be there. But the other with the faces, I can balance each face in dark and light and turn yellow or blue or whatever. So it, it looks complete. It, it takes a bit of that. It's something that doesn't, yeah. It, it's something that's impossible to um, take a picture of. It was, it was from his eyes, completely dark. And he took this based on the words he was hearing saying, <laughs> okay, I bet he's doing that right now. He really did see that. Um, oh, I love this. <laughs> yeah, this, this. These I use a fisheye lens mostly, which is, you know, it takes 100 degrees. Um, and then on the one I did in close for that one, and then the one on the top, I moved back a bit so that I get a lot of people, and I'm holding the camera as high as I can. Yes. Which reminds me, on the uh, labyrinth pictures, I actually used a tripod leg and I held the camera up about 10 feet high and I used the remote control to take it to get up high enough to be able to look at the Because that's just looking, I'm not tall enough to be in the right place now. We're going to have to go over to the. Are we going to skip those if we're out of time? Well, let's just. Okay, do that. Okay. Oh, and of course. The day, Nancy and the David. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, that's a, a classic picture of George on the right side. Yeah. The joy of it. Sprinkling his olive water. 
But and here is where that's in gray. This is sorry. The actual picture is probably this size. If I put the whole picture in there, it would go all the way over to here because I was taking pictures of the whole thing. That's it. One little sliver right up the side with uh, Guadalupe, Virgil Guadalupe in the background too. So in that situation, I didn't even know that, that picture was in there. I knew George was there. I knew from the spot that I knew, but you see, it captures so much of that event with the Virgin here, with these beautiful things, with the Indian dancers here, with George's delight in uh, sprinkling. <laughs> you know, it's just in the moment, and, and Beth picked that out and highlighted by putting it right there. I really love taking photographs of these, but this is an example. You just gotta, I take a lot of pictures. It's, it's so fast, it's so swirly. Um, to get one pattern just right. <laughs> and then we get something here. There's one that I didn't get to put in where the little kids were all sitting along the bottom. Um, the little kids all lined up across the bottom. Um, there's a big show that we're seeing going on. Any other questions? I think it's time to shut down. Talk about the David. Hi, baby. It's a little weird. Good to see you. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting tired. Yeah, I'm old. Right, so how did you, so oh, well, that, that's an, an annual event. It, it, one would not miss. Okay, so this has waiting. You're waiting. So when Iris was, Iris was just... Well, first, I'm waiting for the grand entrance. <laughs> and I'm waiting for the kids in amazement. And, of course, it's all evolving and developing. And David's looking at the stairs, running to get up there. This kid is saying, I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> and uh, the dad's happy to be there, too. So, you know, it's just a moment that's it's good to be there. And then this one, the delight of um, little th um, Thorin, Thorin, Thorin um, getting his little piece of chocolate and his little shiny thing is uh, really fun. Um, and I do... <laughs> and with Marcia, with all the kids coming in and singing, and that's such a delightful moment as well. So then there's art of another art show. <laughs> art show! Back to the beginning of it all. That was posed. Most of these pictures were not posed, but this one was. This was one of the few here that was posed. And it was great. The people putting in the um, the new. Oh, that was so fun. We put in orders in. Filming that every day. The funniest thing was I was there. My mother was British, and we always had tea at ten o'clock in the morning. Um, we were here. I was here taking the pictures. Also. <clears throat> one was inside the cabin, one was outside, and all of a sudden it's 10 o'clock. <clears throat> the guy came out of the cabin and he came down here and he boiled some water and then he went back up there and sat down and had tea. And so I said, please pose for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love the one of Daniel giving the kids the high Yeah, oh yeah. And the angels are so appropriately placed at the top of the. Yeah, and I like I like the intensity which all of them are, are singing. They're so so working at doing it, and then then you're rewarding them with a hot pot. Yeah, this is the one. As you can see, this is far higher than I am. That I'm, I have the camera about ten feet off the ground here. I can pop the is this telephoto wide angle or? Oh, oh, pretty much wide angle. So I'm, I'm in pretty close. 
to try to get as much as possible. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Hope to see you all again. Hey there, um, I'm going to have to stop. Okay. Oh, let me stop recording.